Hi everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to talk to you about an art that makes ancient Egypt one of the most recognizable ancient civilizations. So today's video is going to be about Egyptian painting. The history of Egyptian painting, or let's say Egyptian art as a whole, goes back to the third millennium BC. And the term Egyptian painting actually is most often used to refer to two different things. It may refer to the paintings and the drawings which are applied on a flat and smooth surface, like the ones you find on papyrus sheets or Egyptian sarcophagi. And it may also refer to the relief sculptures that you find in pharaonic tombs, where the design or the depicted person stands out from the surface. So these are more like stone carvings. And the ancient Egyptian artists would embellish those relief sculptures using gold, glass, as well as semi-precious stones such as turquoise and lapis lazuli, which they got from the Nile Valley. So what makes ancient Egyptian painting so original? What makes it different from Greek, Roman, medieval, or any other type of painting? So in today, today's video, we're going to look at the uh, main characteristics of Egyptian paintings. So the first striking characteristic of Egyptian paintings is that the head, the arms, and the legs are always shown in profile, whereas the chest is seen from the front. The ancient Egyptian artist followed very strict rules in terms of colors. Men were typically painted in red or brown, whereas women were painted in yellow. The depicted figures are usually young and healthy, and they stand in a stiff and rigid position, but their facial expressions are neutral, serene, and calm. The pharaohs, the gods, the goddesses, and the nobles were usually idealized in the paintings, while the slaves, common people, and animals are usually portrayed in a more natural and realistic way to show their limited importance. So what were the Egyptian paintings used for? What was their purpose? In fact, the Egyptian paintings were not used for artistic and aesthetic purposes only. In fact, they were believed that they would create or provide a pleasant afterlife for the deceased person or the pharaoh. And usually in the burial chambers and the pharaonic tombs you find hieroglyphs and paintings which depict uh, Egyptian gods such as Anubis, who is the god of embalming and mummification, and Osiris, who is the god of death and resurrection. So to put it very simply, those paintings were believed to, let's say, uh, make the journey to the afterlife an easier process for the pharaohs. So, in addition to making the journey to the afterlife possible for the pharaohs, those Egyptian paintings usually depict scenes of everyday life. So, in this way, we are given information regarding the ancient Egyptian beliefs, costumes, traditions, and daily activities. So, this is my novel, which I published in 2016, and I already made a video about this book, and the link is provided in the description below. So, this book narrates the story of a 15-year-old teenager named Sami Shaidil, who moves with his family from London to a very scary and gloomy mansion in Scotland. And once he's in that mansion, the protagonist of the story, Sami Shaidil, will discover a magical book which will take him back to ancient Egypt. And once Sami Shaidil is in ancient Egypt, he will meet Pharaoh Ramses, his children, and he will have to go to Egyptian temples, he will need to go to the uh, pyramids in order to solve the mystery of the sacred triangle. And the protagonist of the story cannot come back to his current era, to the 21st century, unless he solves the mystery of the sacred triangle. So, in this book, you find many descriptive passages on Egyptian paintings. 
So I'm going to read you those, some of those uh, descriptive passages on Egyptian paintings. I will, of course, read them in French first because this book was originally written in French. So I'm going to read you the first passage. Nous parcourûmes encore quelques mètres. Je contemplais les édifices qui nous bordaient le chemin. Ils étaient tous construits en briques de terre séchée et des colonnes égyptiennes les suspendaient. Des peintures étaient soigneusement dessinées sur les murs et sur les colonnes, représentant des pharaons et des dieux égyptiens. Aussitôt, l'immense porte s'écarta en nous laissant voir, là-bas, un peu plus loin, un immense palais égyptien. Tout comme les autres édifices, il était construit en briques de terre séchée. Les peintures, figurant sur les murs ainsi que sur les grosses colonnes qui suspendaient le palais, représentaient toujours la même chose, des pharaons, des dieux, des déesses et des caractères en hiéroglyphes. Un peu plus haut, dans les terrasses, il y avait des palmiers tordus d'où débordaient des rameaux de date. Une délicieuse odeur de poisson grillé flottait dans l'immense cour qui nous séparait du palais. And the translation would be We walked a few more meters while staring at the buildings which lined our path. The buildings were made of dried mud bricks and were hanged by Egyptian columns. Paintings representing pharaohs and Egyptian gods were carefully drawn on the walls and columns. Suddenly, the huge door opened and we could see, just over there, a huge Egyptian palace. Similar to the other buildings, it was made of mud bricks. The paintings on the walls and the columns represented pharaohs, gods, goddesses, and hieroglyphs. Above the palace, in the terraces, there were some twisted palm trees from which branches of dates overflowed. A pleasant smell of grilled fish wafted in the courtyard. So now I'm going to read you the second passage. Nous contemplions les colonnes dans lesquelles étaient inscrits des hiéroglyphes et où figuraient des peintures aux couleurs vives. Je ne savais pas pourquoi, mais j'eus l'étrange impression que les rois et les reines, ainsi que les dieux et les déesses qui avaient le corps d'un être humain et la tête d'un animal, de crocodile, de lion, de chat et de chacal, soigneusement dessinés sur les colonnes, ne, déta ne détachaient pas le regard de moi. And the translation would be We marveled the columns which contained hieroglyphs and paintings with bright, vivid colors. I didn't know why, but I had the strange feeling or impression that the kings and queens, as well as the gods and the goddesses, having human bodies and animal heads of crocodiles, lions, cats, and jackals, meticulously drawn on the columns, were like staring at me. So now I'm going to read you the last uh, passage on Egyptian paintings. Of course, the last uh, passage among the ones which I selected for today's video. Des colosses représentant des pharaons aux bras croisés sur la poitrine se dressaient majestueusement devant l'immense encadrement de l'entrée du temple. Nous y pénétrâmes et marchâmes ensuite dans un long couloir plongé dans la pénombre. Les peintures qui figuraient sur les murs du couloir représentaient des pharaons, des dieux égyptiens et des pêcheurs se tenant sur des bateaux à voile qui flottaient sur l'eau du Nil. And the translation would be Colossi, representing pharaohs with the arms crossed on the chest, stood majestically at the entrance of the temple. We entered the temple and walked in a long corridor, plunged into semi-darkness. The paintings on the walls depicted pharaohs, Egyptian gods, as well as fishermen standing on sailing boats which floated on the Nile River. I think this brings us to the end of our video for today. If you have any questions or opinions, don't hesitate to share them in the comment section. And thank you so much for your attention.